Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. University of Michigan Television Hour. In a report on research, diagnosis, and treatment, we bring you to The Frontiers of Health. This series tells you the progress being made by medicine dentistry, public health, and the other health sciences in man's eternal struggle against illness. This is program nine, dealing with dentistry for children. You're going to watch candid motion pictures of children making their first visit to the dentist. Now here for Frontiers of Health is Adelia Bucus. Hello, I'm Adelia Bucus. I'm filling in for Dr. Judge for a few weeks. And as mentioned, we're going to show you some candid movies today of youngsters on their very first visit to the dentist. You saw one of the pictures in the opening shot. And you're going to see four other children as they make their very first visit. Now, to be quite accurate, it was their first visit to the student dentist at the children's clinic at the dental school. Now, I don't need to remind parents that the day of the first visit to the dentist is really a momentous occasion for the child and for mama. And dentists don't need to be reminded it's rather an important day for them, too. But here at the university, the School of Dentistry feels that they have a particular responsibility to help these student dentists to understand how to help youngsters, how to work with them. Because after all, the field of children's dentistry is a very great one and a growing one. And we want to be sure that the first time a youngster goes to the dentist, that his experience is going to be pleasant and comfortable, that he will look forward to returning. And of course, we want to remember that the first visit should be profitable from a dental point of view for the student dentist who has taken care of this youngster. Our guest this afternoon, our guest is Dr. Kenneth Eastlick, who is director of the Children's Clinic. Dr. Eastlick, I'm wondering, uh, in this uh, picture of the first child, Ricky, I think age three and a half, I noticed that he was carrying a gun. Do most of the youngsters uh, come gun-toting when they come to see a dentist the first time? Well, you may be sure, Adelia, that we don't frisk our patients to make sure they're not loaded with heavy artillery. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think you will see as the program goes along that the children really aren't afraid of this experience when they follow through on the routine that we have been attempting to teach student dentists. Perhaps some of the seniors need heavy artillery to bolster themselves because they're probably more frightened than the three, four, five-year-old on his first visit to the dentist. So it's really a momentous occasion for both the child and the dentist, isn't it? That is true. Well, now in this routine that you have established uh, for the first visit of a child to the dentist, what are the uh, first things that would happen to the youngster when he crawled into the chair? Well, actually, Miss Bucus, we've set up the uh, program in about eight steps, and uh -huh. it's quite routine. And the first two steps are getting acquainted with equipment because some of that equipment really is quite frightening, I have found. And the second step is to get a sample of saliva, to chew wax to promote the flow of saliva, get a sample of the saliva that's sufficient to take to the Curie's lab and find out what 
is this child's susceptibility to tooth decay. Now, who are the first youngsters we're going to see? The uh, first one that you will see is Kathy, who is five years of old, and the next one is Dick, who is six years of old, quite grown up folks. And these are youngsters now who are going to be crawling into the dentist chair for the first time. You know what this is, Kathleen? This is a dental chair, isn't it? Put your foot up there. That's it. You see how these work, haven't you? You go up. Down. Now, you know how to work these? Show me. Let me see if you know how to work it now. What's that make it do? Up. Up? Let's see. By golly, it does, doesn't it? Okay, make it go down now. See, now that's pretty nice. What's that like? It's like an elevator, isn't it? <laughs> now, Kathleen, I'm going to give you a small piece of wax here. And I want you to chew on it, just like it was gum. And you get a mouthful of saliva. You know what saliva is, Kathleen? Spit, you know, suck your mouth. Just put it in your mouth and chew on it. That's it. Chew a little hard. Get a lot. And when you have a mouthful of water, I want you to spit it in here. All right? Say you certainly are a big girl. That's fine. All set? Say you go more. <sighs> right, fine. Okay. Take it. Just put it right in here. That's that girl. Fine. If you got a chair in here, I'd like to have a look at it. Tell you how these work stick. Just step back here a second, over here. You want to press these, they go down. You press this one, up she goes. You want to try it? You try that one first, and that one makes her go down. You want to try the other one, see how it goes up? Yeah, it goes right up, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, we'll put her back down and we'll put you in the chair. Father. Okay. You want to climb in? All right. Let me put you back here a little bit. All right, Dick. Now I'll get you back up there again. All right, Dick. This is almost like chewing gum here. It's called wax. Mm -hmm. I want you to take a little bit of this, or take this and put it in your mouth and, sure? and chew it. Mm -hmm. And put it in. Okay. Warm it up a little bit and start chewing on it. Now I get you. Mm -hmm. Start chewing right away at it. Yeah, well, I know it's live it is, huh? Mm -hmm. You chew a little bit more on there so we can get some more in there, huh? Mm -hmm. Dr. Eastlick, I didn't happen to notice a faculty member supervising this student. Nevertheless, these are senior dental students, and each four seniors is supervised by one staff member. So we are sure he follows the routine. So there's a good bit of supervision, even though we're not seeing it in these films True. today. 
Well, now, actually, I, I rather gather from uh, watching the youngsters crawl in and out of the chair and the student watching the, the child that perhaps the dentist is becoming acquainted with the child as well as the child with the dentist in this particular procedure. I think that's true, although some of these students, as you probably guess, are married and have small children mm -hmm. of their own. <laughs> and that is uh, an advantage, actually, in Distinct. children's dentistry. Now, what are the next two steps? That they do. Well, the next two steps in this orderly routine of getting acquainted with the dentist and his operations is a prophylaxis, polishing the teeth clean, and it's teaching the child a rather proper mm -hmm. toothbrushing. Now, you will notice in here that the student is using disclosing solution. Mm -hmm. The disclosing solution is this brown liquid here, which will stick to any film that's on the teeth, remembering that under this film is where the tooth begins to decay. Now, a child looking in a mirror might see teeth that look so. After they have been touched with disclosing solution, the areas where the teeth are not brushed are sort of a pumpkin yellow color. To clean those teeth and make sure that they are cleaned, the uh, student uses a little rubber polishing cup instead of a toothbrush. The brush might hurt the soft tissues mm -hmm. around the teeth. So this rubber cup, which is flexible, is used. Some of the paste is picked up mm -hmm. in the cup. It's placed on the surface of the tooth, and the motor begins to revolve, and the rubber cup revolves and polishes off that film. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take a look at the youngsters who are having this uh, disclo is it disclosing? It's disclosing solution. Disclosing solution. It discloses the film, and the one who will be disclosed is Joanne, five years of age. Let's take a look at her teeth. Now we're going to put a little of this disclosing solution on this. Okay, open up, buddy. This hasn't got a band stands in there. Now we're going to take that off. Lean back now. Oh, remember that toothbrush I gave you? Why don't we open it up and let you brush your teeth? You know how to brush your teeth? How do you do it? Oh, that's not too bad. Oh, but we don't want to do it that way. Here, let me show you how. Bring your thumb around and we'll put your thumb on the back. Okay, hold it like this. See your thumb? Okay, now put it on. Here, let me take it. And now just roll it on. Let me take it. Watch in the mirror here. Watch in the mirror. No, let me take it. Right? And just pull it up. There you go like that. Mm -hmm. And now you try that. You can get that real good. Okay, are you going to bring your toothbrush in with you next time? Next time you come in, you bring your toothbrush, and you brush in that way at home every day, every day when you get up, and then when you go to bed. You brush your teeth then, you make sure you really have you brush your teeth then. Well, Dr. Eastlick, actually, we're watching one or two procedures in each of the youngsters. 
but all of these steps would be taken in each child on their initial visit to the dentist. Is that right? That is right. We just have the variety to show that it could be done for several young children on the first trip. And to show how many youngsters react at the first time they sit in a dentist chair. And perhaps different dentist techniques. That's right. Now, uh, what are the next steps we're going to see? Well, the next steps have to do with the mouth examination. Mm -hmm. And that I, I mean mouth examination how the teeth fit together when they close, uh, how the soft tissues, how healthy they are around the teeth, and then an examination for anything unusual in that mouth, mm -hmm. and finally an examination for cavities in the teeth. And that, ca that the examination for cavities is completed by taking x-rays, right and left, bite wing x-rays. Now, for the examination, dentists here in the school use a magnifying mirror. Actually, it makes this little finger look like a great big thumb and helps t to see breaks in enamel better. And to explore those breaks in enamel, we use a tine-shaped <coughs> instrument, a very fine point, to see, if you please, if there are any leaks in the roofs of these teeth. Then we secure the radiographs, the right and left uh -huh. x-rays. You get the upper and lower teeth on one film, and that's quite a saving of time when we're trying to keep a child uh -huh. still. And you take x-rays on all of these uh, children the first time they're in, then? We take x-rays of the teeth, 100%, I think. We are anxious to see all the things that we'd like to see an adult. Mm -hmm. We'd particularly like to find out if they have just beginning cavities between uh, the uh, contact areas mm -hmm. of the teeth, mm -hmm. where we can't see with a mirror and explore. In addition, on children, we'd like to know whether the crowns of the permanent teeth are developing correctly, whether the roots of the mm -hmm. first teeth are, are disappearing on time. We'd like to know if there are any missing teeth or any other peculiarities. Well, let's take a look at age, at a child aged four. I think his name is George. That's it. You see that pedal right there? No, no. What the other ones are down. That a boy. Hey! Sit right back. I can already get food. Hmm? I can already. Hey! See, this is a mooring machine. Hey. It's got more on it. What? Hey, what was that pillow clipping thing? That's just a little camera sitting there. Hey, you put your head back in the headrest. So I can see in your mouth. Turn that on. Hmm? I'm gonna do one thing that I can Is it too bright for you? Yeah. Okay, we'll adjust it. Turn that on. No, I have to have it on so I can see your teeth. Right? Now we're going to look into your mouth and see what we can find in there. And then we'll pull your tongue back in. Don't stick your tongue up. That's it. Pull it back in like that. Now turn your head toward me just a little. Okay. that takes pictures of your teeth. We're going to take pictures of your teeth after a while. Here, I'm going to blow the air on your tooth like this. You see how that air feels? Well, I'm going to blow that on your tooth. And it's going to dry your tooth out so I can see it. I'm too fond of blowing. Put the rag hmm? out of both there by myself. No, I'll blow it for you, and then I'll let you hold this when I don't want to blow the air anymore, OK? See how it feels? OK, now you hold it. Keep your mouth open. Pick your head up just a little. And a boy. Okay, now let me have it. Go again. That hurt you? That tickled. It tickled you? Okay, I won't blow it as hard as Okay, hold it. Open up. Pick your head up a little. Oh boy. Oh, let's see, we'll just take a look in here. Can you pick your head up just a minute? Mm -hmm. Now we'll take a look at your bottom teeth. Here, I'll have to blow a little out of here. Okay. Turn your head toward me just a little, Judge. Just a little more. 
Can you record me? I don't know. Don't run there. Making too much noise. Okay. Yeah. Now we're going to take pictures of your teeth. Okay? Yeah. We'll put the air back over here. I'm going to put this in your mouth. I'm going to want you to bite down. See on this? This is going to go on the inside of your mouth. And when I tell you to bite down, you bite down on this, and you're going to keep your mouth closed, okay? And then we'll take a picture of you, too. you got to keep your head straight, though, just like this. Okay. Now we'll put it right in there. Move your tongue over. Okay, now bite down. Close. Oh, hold it. No, open up again. Oh, okay, now close. Okay, now keep your mouth closed like that. Keep your teeth closed, okay? And keep your head straight. Right there. Okay. This is the camera that takes pictures of your teeth. We're just going to put it up against your cheek right here. And then we're going to take your picture. Okay? I want you to hold your hand still now while we take the picture, okay? The camera's going to make a little noise. It's going to be a buzzing, so don't let it scare you. You keep, keep your head still. Atta boy. You know, this uh, camera was really pretty well conceal concealed, Dr. Eastlick. I think George was a very alert little boy to notice it. But then, the dentist interested the child so completely in uh, the procedures that were going on, the child forgot that the camera was on him, and I think that's quite a compliment to your student, don't you? Yes, I was really pleased with the manner in which this student handled that child. Mm -hmm. He had to be a little bit stern in order to get attention, but he did it nicely, and I'm sure that George enjoyed the experience. Well, now, are, are most of the youngsters this well-behaved? All of the children we've seen come in here seem quite calm and comfortable about the situation. Actually, all of the children who came on that clinic session were well-behaved children. They were mature enough, apparently, at from three and a half to six years of age mm -hmm. to accept the situation and enjoy it. We often are asked by strangers, I'm surprised there's no more noise in this clinic. Well, actually, if the senior follows through, unless he meets an uh, unusual behavioral mm -hmm. problem, he should be able to interest that child and make him think it's sort of a new experience, maybe like going to the circus. Uh -huh. Now, what are the last routines in this uh, first visit to the dentist? The last routines, if this child has not been drinking fluoridated water, are a topical application of 2% sodium fluoride solution to the surface of the dried teeth, allowed to dry on those teeth. And finally, the child will, you, will be dismissed, and he will be dismissed with a souvenir, a gift, if you please. It's not a gift for being good. It's a souvenir of going to the dentist that leaves him feeling pretty good about that situation. Mm -hmm. So that now we're going to take a look at Ricky, the little boy who came to see the, the dentist with a gun in his hand. Remember, Ricky's only three and a half. Turn off the light. Yeah, here we go. Put your feet right up there, boy. What did I do? Oh, I don't know what you did. Turn that light. The light's still on. What? Okay, now we're going to paint some nice water on your teeth. Okay. Put a little on. Okay. And put this cotton in. Whoa. Go real wide now. That a little too far back for you? Okay. Don't feel good. Okay, real wide now. Open. How's that, okay? Now you hold this up in here. Can you do that for me? Boy, you've got a lively tongue there, haven't you? Okay, now we're going to blow a little air on here. Hey, feel good? 
There we go. Good. Okay now. Now we're going to paint a little of this on your teeth. Okay, ready? There we go. Open your eye. Open your eye. There, boy. Okay, now. We're going to wait here for five minutes. Okay. There we go. How was that? That was pretty good, wasn't it? Okay, now. You ready to go now? Well, I'd like to give you this to take home with you. You like that? What do you think it is? What do you think it is? Huh? Like A what? Sandy? Does that look like a Sandy to you? Boy, it's getting around that time, isn't it? Okay, Rick. Well, Dr. Eastlick, is this one of the little toys that the children were uh, receiving the day we took these movies? That's true, uh, Delia. Uh, Ricky left mm -hmm. with Doc, who's a rather large dwarf, and he thought it was Santa Claus, I guess, because of the size of the girth here in the midline. <laughs> well, now, the children we've seen today were three and a half to six years of age. Uh, do you have any children who come uh, at an earlier age than three and a half to the children's clinic? As I remember, the youngest child to come to our clinic this year was two years and two months, mm -hmm. and actually had two fillings. Well, would you mind giving us a very brief summary of the information we've learned from the first trip to the dentist of five different youngsters? I think these five children and their dentists have demonstrated our technique rather well. If you noticed, all the way along, those young dental students have explained and then gone ahead and done what they had to do in that mouth. Therefore, they did cover quite a number of objectives in that first appointment's routine. I won't enumerate them again, but there they were, and nobody loafed. Uh, one other thing, I think, one other value came out of it. It did demonstrate that these students are going to be able to go to various parts of the country and practice for children. If they can practice on children uh, beginning at three and a half, they aren't going to be afraid in the future. Well, it certainly demonstrated that the youngsters can have a very pleasant and uh, profitable experience this first time they go to the dentist, Dr. Eastlick, and thank you so much. And we want to thank your students and your staff, and certainly the youngsters and their parents for cooperating with us so that we could make the films and so that we could produce this program. Now next week we're going to have some children in the studio with us, and they're going to help us demonstrate the blessings of interceptive orthodontics. The dentists tell me that this means very simply that if they can work with children when they're quite young, they can avoid filling the youngster's mouth full of appliances or braces in the later years. So won't you join us next week for Frontiers of Health? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bucus. Any questions you might have concerning any dental problems can be answered best by your family dentist. of Health is designed to acquaint you with the modern knowledge and techniques used in your behalf by all of the health sciences. Ted Nielsen speaking. This program was produced on Kinescope Film at the television studios in Ann Arbor. This is University of Michigan Television. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. 
For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.